Hey losers, I'm Goral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with a video that I decided to do because it's March and St. Patrick's Day is coming up. It's the start of spring, hopefully, wherever you are. So I'm going to be uh, recommending some books that are green colored. I am, of course, appropriately dressed in my typo negative shirt. <laughs> And I'm ready to talk about some good fucking books. First up on my list is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is a YA horror novel that gets real heavy into the body horror. I mean, not like, um, it's not like American Psycho. It's not extreme, but it has some body horror that was like, honestly, gnarly, <laughs> especially for a YA novel. Um, I didn't see it coming, but this is about this like secluded girl's school. They're on an island and the wildlife on the island starts behaving really strangely. And eventually um, the girls and the teachers at the school get this disease and it kind of manifests differently in everybody. Um, but they call it the tox and most people have died from this at this point in our book. We're following just a handful of girls who are trying to get off the island and it is gruesome. It's interesting. I really love the way that this disease played with the environment and um, hearing all the different ways that this has manifested in the characters. The main character, Hetty, I believe she had like a plant or a flower like grow out of her eye. I, if I'm remembering it right, it's been a couple years since I read this. So like she's missing an eye <laughs> because the plant grew out of her fucking eyeball, um, her eye socket. Uh, I don't remember if it really says in the synopsis, but this is one that I'm thinking maybe I'll have to reread at some point because I really, really enjoyed it when I read it and thinking about like all the weird talks problems makes me want to reread it again. Next on my list is Inspection by Josh Mallerman. This book was crazy, but I do have to say that this um, really draws a line on uh, like binary genders, which might be a problem for some people. I mean, like I'm not saying, I don't know. I don't know what I am saying. I don't know if I'm the person to talk about this because I'm not genderqueer, but this really says that like, these are boys and these are girls and there's nothing in between. So I don't know. It's up to you whether or not you can tough that out. But I really did think that this was a good book despite, and I really don't know what the author's real opinion on those things are. This is a book about two schools and they don't know each other exists. One is full of boys and one is full of girls and um, the people running it are definitely raising these children in a certain way that is very interesting. And um, the crux of the story basically is that one of the boys and one of the girls find out each other exists and they're like, how could this fucking be? Because they've never seen, the boys have only seen males and the girls have only seen females and it, it's a really interesting book. But like I said, the people in this book at least imply that there are two genders and that's it. If you can put all that aside, um, it's really interesting. Fast paced, interesting, really had me at the edge of my seat throughout the whole book. It was a good one. Next on my list is Last Days by Adam Neville. This one is thicker and it definitely had a slower pace. So that was sometimes rough for me, but all in all, I thought that this was a really interesting book. It is told like documentary style almost. We're following a documentary crew as they make a documentary. So that might be appealing to some people. That's really, um, a uh, trope that I really love in horror. Uh, but in this one, we're following a documentary crew who is kind of like researching this cult called the Temple of the Last Days. And the documentarian in this thinks that there might be something paranormal happening. And strange things do start to happen to them as they're like progressing in their filmmaking, as they're going to these different locations that the cults um, visited or houses that they inhabited and things like that. 
and um, Adam Neville definitely has some very he is very skilled at writing creepy imagery you know what I mean things that like you can picture so vividly in your head which is something I need as a reader I can't like my brain obsesses over it if it's not clear enough to me <laughs> so I really do appreciate when an author comes out um, has good visuals, has great imagery, and it like really scares the shit out of you. I love that. Next on my list is The Owls Have Come to Take Us Away by Ronald L. Smith. This is a middle grade book. The character in this is, I don't know, maybe like 12 years old, and he is having these strange experiences, and he can't quite figure out what exactly is happening. And as he's looking into this, he's starting to think it might be aliens, and his parents are very resistant to this. Um, they think that he might need psychological help. So there are some parts in here where it's like, if my child were reading this, I feel like I would have to talk to her about the benefits of psychological help because this book really seems like at least the parents in this they're minimizing his experience and leaning heavily on um wanting to put him on medication and things like that which is not a bad thing but this book kind of makes it out to be like that because his parents are kind of like the bad guys in this right so there's that but like this is a fucking alien book do you know how gratifying it is to me <laughs> to like read a book and be like well, I mean, this is like almost explicitly aliens, right? I mean, look at the cover. But like to read a book and be like, yes, it is aliens. God damn, I love that. I fucking love that. This had a great ending too. I love the ending of this book. Next on my list is Mon- Oh, Miscreations. I almost said Monstrosities. Miscreations, God's Monstrosities, and Other Horrors. This is edited by Doug Morano and Michael Bailey. This is an anthology and it includes authors such as Michael Weehunt, Joanna Parapinski, Brian Hodge, Nadia Bolkin, Linda D. Addison, Josh Mallerman, Ramsey Campbell, Max Booth III, Christina Singh, Victor Laval, Lord Barron, Scott Edelman, Lucy A. Snyder, Orby Payne, Bracken McLeod, Usman T. Malik, M.E. Bronstein, Christy Demeester, Stephanie Wojtovich, Mercedes M. Yardley, and Theodore Goss. Uh, there were a lot of great stories in this. They're all about like monstrous things. And so like, you know, I don't always love anthologies. Like I think mostly I feel really lukewarm towards them, but this is one where I liked a lot of the stories. There weren't a ton of duds and um, like I'm recommending it, not just because it's a green book, but because I also liked it and it's also green. Great cover too. Thanks. Swamp Creature vibes. Last book on my list is The Chrysalis by Brendan Deneen. This is kind of like sci-fi horror, which I appreciate. And this is about a couple, Tom and Jenny. They move out to the country and Jenny finds out that she's pregnant, which is a big change for them. They're trying to get their lives like on track. So this is something where it's like, oh, now we have to do this in overdrive because we want to be able to care for this human being we've created. And um, so Tom's like trying to pull his life back together. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I remember there being like an issue. I can't remember if there is like addiction or something like that where um, he's kind of like recovering from something along those lines. Does that make it easier to figure out whether or not you want to read this? He gets a job, it's going well, but then he finds this weird thing in the basement and he's like drawn to it and it starts to cause problems and it's something weird and goopy and you know I love weird and goopy. This is just like a book I don't really hear people talk about. I don't talk about it very often, but like when I read this, I had an enjoyable experience. I liked the process of this thing interfering with these people's lives. The results of that as well. It's good, it's a good one. So those are a couple green books to celebrate spring and St. Patrick's Day and shit like that. Uh, I hope I can recommend something you might want to pick up and enjoy. I'd love to know if you read any of these and what you thought. 
Uh, make sure to check out my link tree with all my links to like social media and shit. But otherwise, that is what I have for you today. I hope you guys um, have a really great month. I'll see you later. Goodbye.